YouTube user Vuk asked me to do Vuk, Vuk, whatever your name is, asked me to do something from Slavic folklore. So today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite books that I own despite me hating the person who wrote it, uh, Balanchine's Complete Stories of the Great Ballets by George Balanchine, who is trash and garbage and we can talk about him another day, but what we're going to talk about is the romantic ballet Giselle, because in it we talk about the wheelie. So it's a it's a two act ballet. It's the first like perfect romantic ballet. Romantic not in the sense of oh two people are kissing and all that. We can talk about what the difference between a romantic ballet and any other ballet is at another time. But it's it's classified as like one of the best ballets to have ever been written or performed ever in anything ever, and I love it and it's amazing. But anyway, so the plot of it it's two acts, and the first act is there's this guy named. Albrecht, Duke Albrecht, and he is, like, he, he disguises himself as a peasant, um, the peasant's name is Lois, but who cares, because that never really comes up. He disguises himself as a peasant, uh, and goes and, and hangs out with this girl named Giselle. Uh, and Giselle knows nothing about the fact that he is a duke. Duke Albrecht, as Duke Albrecht, is engaged to marry a girl named Berthilda, I want to say it was? Uh, yeah, Bertilda. Uh, and she's daughter of the Duke of Courland, I think it is. It's another neighboring country. Anyway, their marriage would make it so the two uh, dukedoms are, are together, and there's a bunch of uh, benefits to that being a thing. He doesn't love Bertilda. He, obviously, because that's how it works, loves Giselle. But Giselle knows nothing about the fact that he's a nobleman. So... One day, Albrecht, as Albrecht, goes out and hangs out with a bunch of other noblemen and is hunting. They finish hunting, they come back to the village, and Bathilda is at the village. And Albrecht knows that, so he runs away and hides. So they welcome everybody, and they have a party, and they do a bunch of dances, and everyone is really super chilled with it. And Giselle and Bathilda, who had never met before this... Are, are pretty chill with each other. Giselle does a bunch of really cool dances, and Bat Hilda's like, you're super cool. Here's a necklace, because I like your dancing, and you're pretty, and all of that. Now, there's another guy, a gamekeeper, whose name is Hilarion, which I think is my favorite name ever. He is also in love with Giselle, and warns against Giselle being the lover of Albrecht, because Albrecht may not be who he seems. Giselle's mother doesn't like the fact that she's with Albrecht either, uh, because according to the story, Giselle has a weak heart and could easily die from having a weak heart, I guess. Anyway, uh, that's a plot point, actually, because it turns out that Hilarion finds Albrecht's sword with the rest of the, the noblemen and exposes him for being this the, the nobleman and not the peasant, Lois. And Giselle goes, oh my goodness, and flies into this... this unconsolable fit of grief and dies in Albrecht's arms. Act 2 is the important bit, because here's where we get into the supernatural stuff. Uh, Act 2 starts at Giselle's grave. Hilarion is, is at Giselle's grave, crying and moaning and mourning and doing all the things that someone had ought to do when someone that they loved died. Then these women show up, these women clad in the white flowy dresses that you will often see in ballets now. Uh, actually, as it turns out, Giselle is one of the first few to actually employ these dresses. Now you can tell where my main fandom is, is in ballet. Uh, I mean, it happened in La Sylphide and La Sylphide before that, but anyway, these are the wheelie. And, and I'll get into what they are in a little bit, but plot-wise, the wheelie show up, and and they draw Giselle's, Giselle's spirit from her grave, and and basically induct her into their clan of ghosty women things. There's the wheelie queen, Mirtha. Mirtha? Mirtha? It's got a TH in it, but I don't know how it would be said because I don't speak any of the Slavic languages. But anyway, basically they show up at night, find any man that exists in the forest, and make them dance until they're dead, because they're vengeful. You know, that's a thing. And so they come on Hilarion. Meanwhile, Giselle is hanging out at her grave, and all the rest of the wheelie go somewhere else and they find Hilarion there. Albrecht shows up to mourn at Giselle's grave, and Giselle is like, oh hey, 
I'm here, I'm kind of a ghost, but I'm here and all that, and then she forgives him because she still loves him, despite the fact that he lied to her and deceived her and all the other stuff, and it was really uh, hilarious that was actually on her side, but anyway, so he forg or she forgives him, they dance a little bit, the rest of the wheelies show up. This is after they made Hilarion dance until he was nearly dead, then said that they were going to let him go, and then instead drowned him in a lake. Uh, which... Justice, I suppose. So they show back up, and they're like, oh look, another man! And Myrta is like, well, time to make uh, Albrecht dance until he's dead, and Giselle is like, no, don't do that, because I love him, and, and he's actually chill. And Myrta's like, no, screw you, dance, motherfucker, and then he has to start dancing. And he dances and dances and dances and dances until the sun starts to come up. Giselle continually pleads with Myrta, and 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 finally her, like, the, the love that Giselle has for Albrecht overcomes the magic of the wheelie, and uh, Albrecht is just barely alive and is, is spared. And then the sun comes up and the wheelie all are like, oh crap, we better run back to our own graves. Because uh, apparently everyone, all the women are buried in random places in the forest, I guess. Giselle has broken her tie with the wheelie and is like, yeah, no, I'm actually super chill with you being here and, and I'm not going to try to kill you because of course I was your lover in, in life only so recently. And so she goes back to her grave with peace and Albrecht gets to live the end. Not exactly the happiest of endings, I mean, she is dead and everything and so they can't bone her anymore or whatever they were doing in ballet because apparently in ballet nobody bones. But uh, that that's the end of the story. Now, the ghosts that we encountered are called the wheelie, and that's the subject of today's actual episode. Right, uh, Balanchine, in his uh, analysis of Giselle, states, Poets and novelists of the time were all interested in stories of the romantically supernatural, stories that told of lovely young girls whose love was never fulfilled because of intervening powers. One of these stories told of the girls known as the wheelie, who were engaged to be married yet died before their wedding days. Technically not what Giselle was, because according to the story, she wasn't engaged to marry him, she just loved him. I mean, of course, Bertilda was the one that was engaged to be married, and she's still alive, so I guess they probably went and got married after the ballet. I wonder if there's a Giselle to the Reckoning or something somewhere. But anyway, uh, who were engaged with in the evening, they rose from their graves and danced alone in the moonlight. Their dancing was impassioned with their anger at death, but dressed in the flowing bridal gowns and endowed with unearthly gifts of movement, their ghostly forms seemed never to touch the ground. They were so beautiful that it was simple for them to attract young men into their midst, but they were as dangerous as they were irresistible. Their hearts had been broken with deceptive ethereal charm. They danced with the young men who came only to trap them. Uh, their suitors were compelled to dance until they died. The wheelie that we see in the ballet are adapted from... The actual villa, or villa, I suppose, of uh, actual Slavic legend, which are, uh, according to some tales, girls who are cursed to never find their true love, and if they do find their true love, that true love dies a horrible death. The whole dying and then coming back because they were uh, jilted on their wedding day is perhaps one of the, uh, I guess, disambiguations that happens with the wheelie because, of course, this concept of a girl who's denied their love for some reason and comes back as some sort of spirit afterwards is prevalent in basically every society. And and nothing can really be uh, said to be the one true only version of the, the wheelie. But we're going to go specifically with uh, just this idea of a woman who was denied her her true love somehow and and becomes a ghost because of it. That's what we're talking about today. So to get to the real bits about uh, what these things are, we have to go back to South Slavic mythology, to uh, the creature called the Wila. Wila, I guess I don't know. Um, they're like female fairy-like spirits. Uh, that live up in the clouds and sometimes also down 
on Earth, and they are, they're like nymphs, I guess? They have power over wind, which I guess makes sense, because ballet makes it look like you're floating and all that stuff. This is a much more ballet-centric episode than I intended it to be, but you guys get to deal with that. These beautiful maidens, and they, uh, originally, way back, uh, like, origin story style, were cursed because they'd been frivolous in their lifetimes, and are now floating between this life and whatever comes afterwards. The frivolity aspect might be lost in the, uh, in the ballet that we were talking about, because it's not she who was being frivolous, but in fact, the gentleman who was. But it's, it's all based back on this thing. They, they generally appear either as, like, beautiful naked women, or, uh, women in sparkling white dresses, uh, or green skirts made of leaves, or, or blue, like, fabulous robe kind of things like that. Um, apparently their weakness is that they can't have their hair messed with. If even a single hair from the head of a Wila, Wila, I don't know how to say that, we're gonna call it Vila, uh, is, is taken from their head, then the, the, the Vila will be forced to change back to its original form, uh, which... I don't really know what the original form of a vela would be. I guess I don't really... But uh, in some cases, it's also that when her hair gets pulled out, she dies. Um, you can also gain control of a vela by taking a piece of its skin, which sounds metal. Um, if you take that skin and then burn it or char it or, or somehow incinerate it, the vela will disappear, but we don't know what happens to it if it just goes back to the forest or the clouds or whatever it is like that. The vela are similar to sirens of Greek mythology, except for the sirens lived in the ocean and velas live either in the sky or in the forests. Um, their voices are super beautiful and they lure you into the forest and all that, but they can also use their voice to create gusts of wind that can like blow buildings over. They are really strong fighters as well, like, they're, they're good soldiers. According to really old mythology, uh, earthquakes happen when, when Vila fight each other, because they're such hardcore warriors. If you are on the good side of a Vila, then it is said that they will help you out with your life. Like, if you're sick, they'll, they'll uh, give you the cure to the sickness. If you're injured, they will stitch the wound back up for you and use their magic to heal it or whatever like that. Uh, if you are unsure about a thing, they'll tell your future. It, it's good to be a friend of a Vila. It's not good to be an enemy of a Vila. Specifically because if you talk to a Vila and you tell them a thing and then you don't do that thing, or you lie to them about a thing, they'll just straight up kill you. In English folklore, there's a thing called a fairy ring, where there's just an inexplicable ring of mushrooms. In, in the forest, and that's super cool when you run across it, and scientifically, I haven't really looked up why that happens. Uh, Jazzy knows why it happens, and she is sitting over there, so we'll have her tell you about it in a little bit, but there is a thing called a vela ring, which is like a, a, a ring of really thick grass, which is said to be where the vela have danced. Uh, don't step on it because it brings you bad luck. Don't walk on it, don't do any of that at all. This is Jazzy. She's the guest scientist for the day. Jazzy, talk to us about fairy rings. Okay, so mushrooms are fungus. Fungus reproduce asexually. And when they go to reproduce, they have these little, like, fingers that go out called mycelium, and they kind of branch out, searching for more food. So there's, like, the parent fruit of the mushroom, and it will branch out, and as it searches for food and water, it kind of does it in a concentric circle sort of way. So the offspring kind of come up next to it, and then the next offspring come up next to it in this, like, arc pattern. So as they deplete what's going on in the center, they keep going around the arc. And that's how you get fairy ring. That makes sense. Hey, look, Tori just came in as well. Hello, Tori. Tori, come jump into the video. Say hello to our viewers. We're filming Deity Salad. No. Scooch, My, scooch more this way. The there we go. Hey, there we go. Hello. Uh, Tori is one of the other actors in the other series that I will talk about later, Emu Eye, uh, where we talked about in our most recent episode, the Demovoy, which is also a Slavic deity thing, so this technically counts uh, in, in this video as well. Wonderful. 
Well, thank you for the explanation. It makes sense. Of and, course. And uh, we'll get back to the rest of the video right now. Sure. As is often the case in mythology, there is a related spirit deity thing called the Rasalka, which is, while the, the Vila are like an air spirit, the Rasalka are like the water-based version of this thing. Um, they basically live in rivers. Uh, they are definitely dead, very similar to the Vila, well, similar to the Wheelie in the story mostly, but um, they're definitely dead. They're definitely dangerous, and they're definitely like an unclean spirit kind of thing. The kind of thing that if it was in your house, you'd need an exorcist for. Um, they are people who have, well, specifically women, who have died in a violent manner before they were supposed to, mostly because they were jilted or, or cheated on by their lovers and went and killed themselves. They live in rivers and often drown people. Uh, much in the same way, actually, that makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. The wheelie in Giselle made them dance, or made uh, Hilarion dance until he was nearly dead and then drowned him in a, in a lake. So it might be that the wheelie from that are actually a mix between the Vila and the Rasalka. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Kate Resby has a beautiful song called A Ballad regarding something that would definitely turn someone into a Rasalka. Uh, wherein it talks about a lady who's on her wedding day and she's getting dressed to be married, and someone comes up and is like, bro, or not bro, I guess, lady, you shouldn't get dressed to be married because the person you're supposed to be marrying is actually not only cheating on you, but is in the process of being married to someone else right now in the church. So you should go and check on that. And she goes, oh, balls. So she throws on, like, a bunch of dark clothing and puts her veil on so that no one can see her face and she runs to the church and sure enough the guy she's supposed to be marrying that day is in fact marrying somebody else which is a dick move really anyway she's like well that's it for me and kills herself the end of that song um but it's it's definitely something that were that to continue it would it would have uh turned into a a Rosalka, i am definitely sure this is actually from a work called The Poetical Works of John Bolton Rogerson, uh, and is on page 200 of the book, which I will link in the description. It's a Google Books thing, so you can totally get it for free, which is awesome. And I didn't know that it was actually a Rogerson thing. I thought it might have been something that, that Kate Resby wrote herself, because she's amazing. But maybe I'll, I'll link her, her song version of it also in the, the thing. Whoa, this video is getting really long. Um, so, so we're going to wrap this up by talking about what the possible earliest version of this creature could be, and it is the Sylph, which is a, a sort of air elemental from the works of Paracelsus, who was an ancient, I say ancient, he was a six, 16th century alchemist, and he wrote about uh, these air elementals called Sylphs, which are always beautiful women, and they controlled things like air, which is pretty much spot on to the stuff about the Vila from before here, how they are a beautiful woman and they control air, and etc, etc. So they might be a derivative of the Sylphs from Paracelsus's writings and works. Interestingly, Paracelsus is also the name of the giant key weapon that Ava uses in Guilty Gear. Fun fact. That's all that we're going to do to talk about the Wheelie, the Vila, today on the grounds that this is getting far too long, so we're going to say it's a little bit of a stretch, but we're going to say that this is A282 Wind God under a subsection 280 Weather God, uh, on the grounds that they totally can affect the air. So they're a deity of the air, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching this time. I'm not sure what we're going to do next time. Maybe you should tell me, like Vuk did. Um, like, subscribe, comment, etc. Uh, thanks for watching my videos, I super appreciate it.